I think that it was uh, very clear. And I think that clari clarity was very much needed from uh, the British government. And uh, now we have a, a clear framework as a starting basis for negotiation. Right. So we, we, we like the clarity. Let's just take an example of something. The customs union. Because we're going to come out of the customs union, but we want to get back into the bits of the customs union we like, which is not having bureaucratic controls, being able to sign our own trade agreements around the rest of the world. Is that, is that a, a realistic objective, do you think, for the Brits? No, what I found uh, uh, rather odd of uh, Theresa May's speech uh, is that she said that the UK uh, shouldn't uh, be half in, half out. After all, UK has always been half in and half out in the European Union because uh, we have given the, to the Brits so many exceptions uh, since uh, you joined uh, the economic community in 1973, think to the all, all opting out, think to the British rebate, etc. Now, uh, talking about the custom union today is totally premature. We need to uh, start negotiation and we see if it, this, uh, uh, it is a solution in actual terms, uh, which is going to be in our mutual interest. Yeah. Well, look, mutual interest is the key because the British are saying it is in your interest to come to a free trade deal and have lots of cooperation. And, and I, when you think about it, it yes. does seem like it is. It is in your interest, isn't it? So how can you refuse? I, I, I'm able to think to my interest on my own. And of course, we will pursue our interest, and these, uh, the interests are to keep a solid the European Union, which, you wants to, which we want to deepen. But I don't need the London to tell me what is in my interest. I'm very willing uh, to uh, open a very loyal uh, uh, negotiation with uh, the British government, who is a, a, a government who is a friend of us. And just to, just to be clear, do you think the agenda that she set out today on free trade and cooperation on security and science and a number of other areas, do you think that list of demands is achievable? Certainly it is very important to keep a very close cooperation with the Brits on security. I think that once the UK has left the European Union, uh, I, we have an interest in uh, negotiating a trade agreement, probably even a strong trade agreement, but on the model that uh, we have uh, with other non-European member states. And on the custom union, the devil is in detail. What did you think of the threat, the implied threat, that Britain could become a tax haven? As I see, there isn't a, mm, a spirit of revenge uh, anywhere. Nobody wants to have a revenge. Revenge on what? This is why I don't think that it's particularly necessary to uh, evoke uh, any kind of threat. And I think that um, ev evoking a threat is totally useless and certainly won't affect in any way the negotiation, which must be based on mutual trust, on loyal cooperation, but not uh, on, un on unilateral threats of any kind. Who's going to lose more? At the end of all of this, who's going to be worse off? Do you think the British are going to be worse off or the rest of the EU? The Brits. The Brits are going to be worse off. This is, uh, in any case, it's a damage limitation process. It is a loss for the EU to have the UK out. It's going to be a big loss for the UK to leave the European Union. But we are friends and we need to handle the negotiation in order to limit the damage, both for us and for you. But for you, the damage can be bigger. A lot of British people say if we can stay in all the bits we want to stay in, we have all the trade, we can control immigration. That sounds like a good deal to most British people. I just wonder whether it wouldn't be tempting to the people of Italy or lots of other countries in Europe. I fully agree with you when you say that we must reform the European Union. Uh, since I was in government with Matteo Renzi and now with Paolo Gentiloni, we are uh, very convinced that we must reform the European Union. But uh, uh, we, to stay in a community, you cannot simply pick and choose uh, what you like and leaving aside what you don't like. And uh, if everybody thinks only to the advantages, we wouldn't have a community anymore, we wouldn't have a European Union anymore, and that would, wouldn't be in our interest. Sandro Gotzi, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.